Welcome back to Photoshop Basics on PSD Touch Plus. I'm Martin Perhiniak, and in this episode, I'm going to talk about smart objects. This is similar to using masks to be able to work completely non destructively. I will show you an example where I show nearly all the advantages of working with smart objects. You can convert any layer into a smart object. I have this background photograph and I have the windmill on a separate layer. I will right click on the windmill's layer and I will choose convert to smart object from the menu. That will convert the layer into a smart object and this is the icon for a smart object. If the thumbnails are larger, you will see that icon here on the bottom right corner of the thumbnail. I will create a duplicate from this layer by using the move tool and pressing down the alt key. So there's a duplicate. And if you want to turn back a smart object layer into a normal layer, you can right click again on the layer and choose rasterize layer. The only disadvantage of a smart object is that you can't directly draw on that layer or make changes to it. So if you use the brush tool, you will get a warning sign that you can't draw on this layer, but you can draw on a rasterized layer like this. Of course, I don't want to do that now, but now I have a normal layer on the right and the smart object on the left. Now, what is the first big difference between the two? If I select both of them, and I use my free transform tool and I make them much smaller, something like this, little windmills in the background. And then if I change my mind and I would like to turn them back again in their original size and I use the free transform, you will see that on the left, we have a perfect quality, but on the right, we lost the quality because of the downsampling in the previous step. So if I accept this, you can see that the smart object can use always the original resolution while another normal layer will always lose quality when you use the free transform tool. This is a very important thing and one of the main advantages of working with smart objects. So I will now just delete this rasterized version. I don't need it. I will only use my smart object version. I will put a windmill here in the foreground but I will make a duplicate and I will put that in the background make a small version something like this I put that here in the background and I will make a third version alt click and drag put it here on the right make it a little bit larger if this is the middle ground then it should be a little bit larger and I will use the free transform tool to quickly reflect this layer by pressing down the alt key and clicking here on the right control point I can easily rotate it like this. This is by the way the flip horizontal option that you also have in the menu edit transform and flip horizontal. So now I have three versions and as you can see in the layers panel all of them are smart objects. Now, the advantage of smart objects is that if you duplicate them, they will share the same source. If I double click on any of these thumbnails, I will see the source image that I saved when I created the first smart object. If I make changes on this and then I save this embedded smart object source, we will see the changes appear on all the instances at the same time. So let's try this. I will arrange my documents to see both images at the same time. So this is the image with the three windmills. And here on the left, we have the windmill, the source file of the smart object. I will create an adjustment layer. In this case, I will use hue saturation. I turn on colorize, I turn down the lightness and I increase saturation to turn it into completely red. But now I will go to my masks panel and I choose invert to invert the mask for the adjustment layer. And then I use my brush tool and I choose white as my foreground color. And I quickly draw over parts of the windmill like this to add some marks on it. Now there's no change yet here on the right in the original image. I just make this a little bit larger. 
But if I come back to the source image and I go to file and choose save, you will see that all of the three instances will update at the same time. And the great thing with the smart object is that you can make another layered document for the smart object and save all of those layers into that smart object layer. So I can now close this image and you see that we have the three instances and they share the same source. So the adjustment layer is saved into the source file which is a file that you don't see in the same folder. It is embedded into the Photoshop document file. If you want to make a duplicate, but without sharing the same source, you need to right click on a layer and choose new smart object via copy. That will create a new layer. We can see that it's there. I can put it here and maybe make it a little, little bit larger like this. But now if I double click on the thumbnail of this layer and I turn off the hue saturation and I save this and I go back, you see this change will only affect this layer because this has now a separate source. Thanks to that option, the new smart object via copy. And last but not least, another great feature with smart objects is using filters if you use filters on a smart object, they will be completely added non-destructively and they are called smart filters. So I will use a filter on this layer and I will go to artistic and I will choose cut out. Or maybe I should use another filter called watercolor and I click on OK. And you see we apply this filter, but again, this filter is non-destructive because it's a smart filter. I can always turn it on and off here in the layers panel, or I can click on the filter's name to make changes to it or replace it with another effect. In the following episodes, I will talk more about using smart filters for special effects like simulating depths of field or using sharpening in a smart way. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time when we are going to talk about sharpening photographs.